Do you want me to review some of the things that we have done last time? I don't want to review, I just want to check. Just, just checking this part, right? Mm -hmm. So, you are wondering how we found the magnetic field inside, no, 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 inside no, no, no. and outside the solenoid. No, so, I see what you have done. Okay. No problem? No problem at all. No problem at all. And also, you want me to briefly review the induction part, right? So let me briefly review this. <coughs> so for example, take a magnet. So the idea of Faraday here, I guess, we can only guess, I guess, uh, that when you run around current, right, you get a magnetic field. Would, would you get a magnetic field if you run around magnetic field? Do you see? Action causes effect. If I give effect, will it cause the action? So far, so good? Yes. But he tries this. So he puts a magnetic field and measures current, and there is no current. Then, actually, this is a funnier experiment. So. You see, his aim is to generate magnetic field and apply it here. And when he applies magnetic field, he expects current here. But current is playing a game to it. Whenever he turns it on, there's a spike of current giving hope, but then it goes down to zero. OK? So what is the reason? Turns out that you can generate current, but you have to change the magnetic flux. Okay, you have to move this magnet. If you are moving this magnet, then you are changing magnetic field, which means you are changing magnetic flux, and only then you, you get electromotive force that generates current. So far, so good? Yes, yes. what's your... Have you seen Faraday's room? And the first solenoid he used to done these experiments? No. I mean, you should check actually because okay. Royal Science Institute still conserves, preserves. His wow. Room. As he left, by the way. Wow. Brilliant. So, <coughs> the point here is change in magnetic flux creates EMF. Okay? And we have a rule for this Faraday's law. It says that the EMF is negative of change in the magnetic flux. And this negative sign just points at Lenz's law, meaning that uh, the current generated is inducing magnetic field against the change in magnetic flux. For example, here you have magnetic field going down. And when you push magnet down, you increase magnetic flux, right? Which means that the total effect is downwards. So you need a magnetic field induced upwards. And to have that, you, have, you need this current. Similarly, if you are removing the magnet, although the magnetic flux is down, it is decreasing. Since it's down and decreasing, the net effect is up. So the effect against it must be down. To create a down magnetic field, the current must run. So it's like triple negative there. Like it's down, but it is decreasing. The third negative comes from Lenz law, and it's down again. So up in, in the end. OK? <coughs> Similarly, if it's up and it decreasing, the net effect is down, so you need a response that is upwards. OK? And here we briefly mentioned that it's not just simply current, it's electric field generated here, circular electric field. Then we talked about alternator, right? Uh, do you need this part to be reviewed as well? No? How about back EMF? No? So. Even if you make these smart adjustments to this um, 
loops so that they always keep intact and always rotate, always feel torque in the same direction. Even if you do that, it will not accelerate forever. At some point, the back EMF generated because of the change in the magnetic flux will be either exactly equal to the EMF that you are supplying, in which case the load is zero, meaning that friction is zero. Even if the friction is not zero, then the back EMF will be, like the difference between back EMF and applied EMF will give you uh, the load that you are applying to the system. Okay? So far so good. So let me continue our topics with something called slide wire generator. So now we are applying what we have learned uh, in terms of the laws from this chapter. Let's say there is a there is a loop. There is a loop that looks like this. And on top of this loop there is a y there there is something sitting on top of it. Okay? And this distance is L. And we are we are pulling this rod with velocity V. But in the same time, there is a magnetic field all around. It's pointing, it's pointing down. It's everywhere, over here as well. OK? So how much, let me just put a voltmeter here. How much voltage will we measure in here? Do you understand the system? Yes? So what's going on here? Why there should be a voltage? Because the area is changing. The area is changing, right? The magnetic field is the same, but the area is increasing. How much is it increasing? Well, we can find the ADT. Exactly. So we can, for example, one way of doing it is we can name this one x, and the area is L times x, right? And the flux is B times A. So flux is B times L times x, and d phi over dt must be the amount of can I sometimes drop the negative sign and you will be okay with this? You use magnitude. Okay. Absolute value. Okay, yes. let me use that. So then we just need d over dt of b l times x. B is constant, L is constant, x is changing. So we get b times l times dx over dt. What is dx over dt? V, right? So BLV is your answer. That's the voltage that you are going to measure in this voltmeter. Everyone agrees with this? Yes? So you are generating voltage simply by sliding this uh, rod over this rail. Now let's ask a different question. Let's look at this example. It's the same system, okay? Let me think for one moment. Okay, so same system. Can we for a moment think about which way is the force here? So if I have a V here, let's say this object has a resistance of R. 
has a resistance of R. Or R is the resistance of the whole loop. And this is the magnetic field. It's everywhere, uniform. What is the current that is going to flow through this object? Let's figure it out. So we already found that E is BLV, right? E is BLV. And hence, the current is BLV over R. So far, so good. Which way is the current flowing? We are saying counterclockwise. Let's see. Force has to be on this way or anti-parallel to V because it says go back. Uh, a small area. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So first let's start with the current, which way it is running. So the area is increasing, which means that the effect of flux is inwards, mm -hmm. right? So it has to be opposite to that. So the current must be flowing this way. This is the induced current. Right? This is the induced current. And magnetic field is inwards. So from L cross from L cross B, the force acting on this system is trying to stop it. Right? <coughs> Let's find how much force do you need to keep it running. So let's say this is FR, resisting force, and this is F applied, let's say. F applied uh, or F supplied, applied. F applied, let's say F applied is equal to F resistance, okay? So how much power are you supplying to this system? Power supplied is, uh, let me just call it power applied. So let me use the same indices. F times V. Everybody agrees with this? Do you remember this formula? I hope you do. And F times V and F is B times I times L, right? Do you remember that formula? B times I times L times V. What is I? It's BLV over R, so it's B squared, uh, L squared, V squared over R. Okay. How much power is dissipated? Let me call it PR. Gone because of the resistance. I squared R, or I times E. Both of them work. I squared I uh, R is also P square, B squared L squared V squared over R, as you can just calculate. So power supplied is equal to power dissipated. Power supplied is equal to power dissipated. Okay. V remains constant. V remains constant. Okay. So far, so good. You get this BVL even if you don't have the rest of this. That's called motional EMF. Let me just write it down. Let's say you have magnetic field it's uniform, pointing inwards everywhere. And you have a rod uh, that has a length L. This time it's not on the rail. It's just by itself. But it has, it, it's a metal, let's say. It's a metal and it's going with velocity V. So it has some free electrons in it. Okay. Um, what will be the EMF generated 
in this situation. So what's going on here? You have electrons. Let's say you have an electron here. So when you are moving the rod, actually you are moving all the free electrons together with the rod, right? Yes. So they go down. Why down? Because what's V cross B is up. V cross B is up. This V cross B is up and the charge is negative. So they go down, making this side negative and this side positive. Okay? And they continue doing this just like in the whole effect. I hope you remember the whole effect. The, there is an E created here and Q V times B must be equal to Q times E. So the electric field generated here is V times B, okay? And the EMF is electric field times the length. Then you also get BVL. So this is yet another way of looking at the EMF generated. We used to memorize this in high school as bubble. Okay. <laughs> yes, very good. So, let me ask you, let's go back to the rail problem. This is an, yet another example. We are back in the rail problem and this time I'm asking the following. I have this and the resistance is R. And I start moving it with velocity V. Let me call it V0. And I'm not applying force. How will it move? Do you understand the question? So, is there a magnetic field? There is a magnetic field. Very good point. Same story. There is a magnetic field everywhere down. By the way, magnetic field could have been up, it doesn't matter. Like the effect will be the same because current reverses, but magnetic field also reverses, so force will still be opposed to this motion. So F will be anti parallel to velocity, so it will be what motion with constant acceleration. Let's see what it is. So do you agree that we already de described this as B squared L squared V over R. Why V over R? Was it, wasn't it V squared? V squared yes. No, no, a the a force by itself is v. is v. B squared L squared V over R. Because force is, okay, let's, let's put one more step here. This is correct. This is correct, yes. Just one more step. Force is B times I times L. And I is, let's look at here, B L V over R. You see, it's B squared L squared V over R. So what do we have here? Let's say this has a mass of M. Mm -hmm. Then uh, F equals to M A. M dv over dt, that's a, right, acceleration, is negative b squared l squared over r times v. Why negative? Because it is in the opposite direction. It is in the opposite direction to the velocity, right? It is not constant acceleration. It's a complicated motion. Do you have any, are you lost or no? This is the first order differential equation, you could solve it. Yes, we can solve it. Let's solve it. So I'm planning to come down here. Okay, while solving it. So dv over v is equal to negative b squared l squared over mr dt. Do you see I'm using the same trick as we used with RC circuits, right? 
it's the same kind of equation. So from 0 to t, this is t prime. From v0 to any v, this is v prime. All right? So I get ln v over v0 equals e to the minus b squared, no, e not yet, minus b squared l squared over mr times t. So then I get the answer v is equal to v0 e to the minus b squared l squared over mr times t. All right, so it will slow down and approach the zero ve velocity asymptotically. Okay, you can actually calculate the total distance traveled by this object by integrating this. Okay, do you have any questions, comments? No? Then let's move to this new, very important topic, induced electric field. I already gave a hint of this. Yes, I did say that it was unconservative. Yes, let's see what it is all about. So let's say I'm change I have a circle and inside this circle I'm changing magnetic field. The area is the same, the area is A, but magnetic field is let's say dB over dt is alpha and alpha is greater than zero. Okay? This tells us that d phi b over dt is um, d over dt b times a. a is not changing, so it's db over dt times a, which is alpha times a. So there is a constant increase inwards in magnetic field. Then let's investigate what's happening outside of this loop. So if I take any loop that includes this loop, I have to have an EMF. And EMF needs to be pointing in the opposite direction of the change, right? If there was a wire here, if there was a wire here, then we would say that the EMF is negative of d phi b over dt. And we would say that it's alpha a. Okay. Okay, let me just... Which way is it? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, let me think. Yes, it's counterclockwise because the net effect of the change in magnetic flux is inwards and the response is outwards, must be outwards. So you would feel a current running around like this. But what if I remove the loop? There still should be some EMF, right? Mm -hmm. How that EMF is generated without a wire? Well, whether there is a wire or whether the wire is not there, it doesn't matter really. You will get the electric field running around in circles like this. And this electric field, as I mentioned earlier, is non-conservative. It's fundamentally different from the electric fields that we have seen before. Integral is equal to e in this case. 
not zero. Exactly. So if we take a loop integral here, so normally this E, the EMF, would be integral E dot DL. Right? Do you agree with this? Loop integral. And this time it's going to be negative d phi b over dt. That's actually the whole message that we want to give here. Okay, and we want to make sure that you have know the difference between two things. So, as I mentioned earlier, there, there is a fundamental difference between electric field created by charges and its conservative. Electric field created by, let me call it actually stationary charges, is conservative. Okay, so for example, they, they look like this, right? They, they, they have these field lines that don't, don't cross each other, right? If you have, if you, for example, start from a point A, go to a point B, come back with a different path, the potential difference, you can talk about potential. Because it's conserved, right? But electric field created by changing magnetic flux is non-conservative. This one is non-conservative. Because it, it runs in circles, right? So when you start from this point A and run around in a circle, come back, you have more potential. So you cannot actually talk about potential. What you can talk about is the generated EMF in a loop. Okay? But then we will see in chapter 30 that we can talk about potential when it comes to inductors. Kirchhoff loop rule applies when there is an inductor yeah. in the circuit. Yeah. So? I mean, there is an idea behind it, though. You know how con e conservative plus e non conservative would be zero in the wires. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a total different story. Yeah. So, Oops. do you have any questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, coordinate system. So in this case, when we ha have a circular electric field, is it only defined into like x, y no. coordinate system, or is it like a something like tube, like a cylindrical thing? You know, because when when I think like when I said field, I cannot think something like linear. I mean, like on. Two. In this particular case, when we draw this B lines, we assume that there are B lines that go in a cylindrical way all the way in and they start from up infinity, go down infinity. And around that tube of magnetic field, you have an electric field running it's around. It's cylindrical too. It's cylindrical too. It's not yes. <laughs> it's not just a circle. It's, it's a cylinder that wraps around it. Sure. Yes, you can. While you are contemplating that, let me move to the next subject. Now, let me talk about eddy currents.
So whole effect uh, looks like like a hole, Carnegie Hall, right? But it's the surname of the person, okay? This one looks like a person's name, Eddie, but it's not, okay? It's actually, do you know that well English that you do know what Eddie is? No? Can you look it up? What, what is the translation of Eddie? It's exactly what uh, this is. So it should be, the translation should be something like swirly. Yes, turbulent stuff, swirl, swirling stuff. So it's not a person's name, but whole effect was a person's name while it looks like it's not a person's name. Do you see? Good. So eddy currents are really interesting stuff. So let me, let's think of a metallic disc. All right. And this metallic disc is rotating with some omega. And we are applying magnetic field to a portion of it. We are applying the magnetic field over here. All right. What will happen? Let's see what happens. Let's actually think about, for example, this point over here. This point A goes to this point A prime. What that point feels, what that point experiences? The force. It, it goes from yes magnetic field to no magnetic field. Do you see that? Yes? So, which means that the magnetic flux for that point is changing uh, outwards, right? There, there was an inwards magnetic field, now there is no mag in, inwards magnetic Can field. Of, uh, magnetic flux of a point? Yeah, yeah uh, I mean, we are, let's say we are sitting on top of the point mm -hmm. and we are just questioning what that point experience experiences right when he, it crosses that boundary, okay? Yes, magnetic field, no magnetic field, so it has, it will create an action against it, okay? My drawing here, so the effect is outwards, so the response must be inwards, right? which means that it should create currents that swirl like this. Do you see? The induced current. While the point B that was out and goes in to B prime, I should have drawn this much bigger, but anyways, that one experiences the reverse. No magnetic field, then yes magnetic field downwards. So the effect is downwards. So the response should be outwards. So far so good? Was your name Sena? Yes. Yes, tell me. You are confused. I'm confused with most Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, it will take some of our time, but I think it's worth it. So let me draw it much bigger. Okay. So this is a metallic disc, and let me remind you, it's rotating. Okay, and we are applying magnetic field only only inside this circle, okay? Mm -hmm. Outside there is no magnetic field. This is our magnetic field. And let's say there is a point B in here. Let me call this point B. 
and that point goes in after some time, right? Because it's rotating. So what that point sees is no magnetic field over here, yes magnetic field over here, right? So magnetic flux for that point changes inwards, so the response must be to create current this way so that magnetic flux is against it. So you will have a swirling current in this direction. Okay? And we already talked about the other parts, so let me just draw it. You have a swirling current in this direction. So you will generate an eddy current. That's what the eddy current means. Uh, good. You can generate this eddy current also if you don't have a rotating metallic disc, but you just have a metallic object. You apply magnetic field suddenly, and it generates that swirling magnetic uh, swirling currents, which in turn generates some magnetic field. That's how the detectors work. They send a magnetic pulse. And if you have a, the metal detectors, uh, sudden magnetic pulse creates eddy current and then it is detected backwards, okay, whether there is a metal or not. Also, you can use this as brakes in trains. Like, let's say you have metallic wheels. If you apply magnetic field to a metallic wheel, it will stop. Why? Because you generate this eddy current, as I've explained here, and notice that the current is in this direction. And if you do L cross B, the force, the resultant force is opposite. And it will always be opposite to the direction of rotation, right? It, it rotates this way, the force tries to stop it. Okay. Also, you must have watched these YouTube videos of magnets going through the loops very, very slowly. Yes. Have you seen those? Very <laughs> uh, I I have seen them somewhere else. So 9.15, we can stop here and watch some YouTube videos for a few minutes.